Hey, what's up guys, Sir Amanon here and welcome to another video. So this one's just going to be covering five decks that I think are pretty strong and super good in the Master Duel format currently. Now I'm going to preface this by saying that of course the game is only three days old, so the format is still very young and there's a lot to be discovered and optimized as we move forward here. And there are lots of players that are having a lot of success in the ranked ladders, playing many different decks that won't be featured in this video. And for the sake of not making this one an hour long, I thought I'd just keep this one brief to just five decks. But uh, if there's anything that you think I'm missing here, or if you want to comment down below uh, what decks you've been grinding with on Master Duel Ranked, I would love to hear them down below in the comments. So yeah, here we go. So we're going to go ahead and cover five decks with some sample deck lists. Uh, these are not necessarily optimized lists, uh, but they will be featuring some of the higher end staples here. So if you guys want me to do another video covering some of the budget staples in the like normal and rare categories for instance uh, feel free to let me know uh, if you leave a hundred fifty likes on this video I will go ahead and do that video as well but let's go ahead and just get started right here so the first one you see is virtual world which uh, I guess this is a bit of a spoiler for the third episode of becoming a master duelist because this is the one that I'm actually working on uh, building here uh, this deck is really really solid uh, very easy to acquire actually because of the fact that we have a lot of normals and rares for the engine cards uh, the extra deck can be a little bit pricey here but overall it's pretty solid uh, obviously VFD being legal is the biggest reason to play this deck right now and you know against a lot of decks even if you get max seed it doesn't really matter as long as you can establish a VFD uh, depending of course on the matchup which is a bit hard to determine in a best of one format but uh, granted that's still pretty solid you have lots of room to play defensive cards here you can play other consistency cards if you'd like things like prosperity and foolish burial goods are good in this deck uh, you have Zeus for going second and even against like the control matchups you have Chuche and Shen Shen to be able to just establish a very more control style of gameplay so this deck has a lot of utility lots of tools available to it high combo potential and uh, being one of the more functional mid-range decks that can uh, kind of play around the various different hand traps in the format I think is very very solid so that's going to be the first one here and then I guess I'm going to spoil the next ones here because you can kind of see what we're going for. But the next one is going to be a more full combo deck in Adam Emancipator. Now, Adam Emancipator is a deck that we have three of Block Dragon, which is pretty crazy. Uh, this particular sample list is taking use of Seconds Light. You don't have to play this card. Uh, things like Adam Emancipator Signs are still very good. You can play like Call by the Grave and like Impermanence. Or you could also play like Board Breaker type cards if you want to. But we have a lot of Tuner Access as well. We have things like uh, Gent Synchron and the O-Line, which I'm playing in this list. And we have Union Carrier Legal 2, which is great for establishing a Dragon Buster Destruction Sword to effectively permanently artifact sight their opponent if they don't draw the out to it. And that in and of itself is really strong. You have Quacky Mirror Guardian to play around certain hand traps. And just in general, this deck has no been known for its resiliency in the TCG. A lot of people, you know, posit this deck as one of the best decks to have never seen real life competitive play uh, that the game has ever seen. And, you know, with the absence of Block Dragon in the TCG, this deck really has not seen much play recently. But Block Dragon is at three and it is the best card in the deck for sure. So this deck is definitely a menace to contend with. Uh, definitely one that uh, you might want to keep your eye out for if you haven't seen this one yet. Super, super solid deck. Uh, lots of consistency, ways to just push past hand traps because a lot of the extenders work, you know, kind of both forwards and backwards. You can start with them, you can extend with them. And overall, I think this deck is a just powerhouse combo deck in the format. Another mention here is things like Drytron. That's another very powerful uh, full power combo deck that, you know, even with the presence of Max C, are still seeing a lot of success. So uh, that's definitely something to consider here. Uh, the third deck that I want to cover here is a uh, Tri Brigade Zodiac, actually, which is one of the decks I think a lot of people have been considering as a front runner, as a more mid range, airing towards the control side of things. Uh, you have a lot of really powerful plays available to you here. Um, Zeus as well is another good option with the Zodiac engine, of course. And then you just have you know powerful tools like Shirai, as well as you know Bear Broom, searching you your copy of Revol. And Revol, as we all know, is a very powerful card as an extender, as well as just a way to get back into your engine. So, yeah, this deck. You know, was one of the best decks in the TCG for quite a while as well. Um, of course, with Dryden being banned at the TCG, the Zodiac engine definitely fell off, but Dryden's at one again, and that's all you really need with this. And so this deck really just, you know, utilizes the best aspects of the Tribrigade engine and the Zodiac cards. Um, of course, Tribrigade Lurilusk is very good as well, um, and I do plan on doing a lot of content with that deck in particular, because you guys know that I play that deck a lot personally. Um, but I thought that for this video, I would showcase off, you know, a wide variety of decks on the spectrum of combo and control. And I think this fits right in the middle, kind of again, towards the control side of things. But yeah, this deck is very, very solid. And I think it's fairly easy to pick up as well. I actually just kind of crafted the things that I didn't have uh, before recording this video, just so that, you know, we would have as much of the deck highlighted as possible. And you can see I'm not missing too much here. Uh, just kind of the extra deck stuff. Um, but overall, I think the main deck is very easy to acquire. So this one is extremely uh, budget friendly and free to play if I do say so myself. 
The next one is going to be on the pure control side of things, and that's going to be Trap Stun Eldritch. Now, this one is a bit terrifying because in the best of one format, uh, people don't really have as many just dedicated outs, things like Lightning Storm and Evenly Matched unnecessarily, unless they're just piloting a blind second deck, which is also a viable strategy, I might add. Um, but yeah, this deck is pretty terrifying. Obviously, you might not even want to play Maxi if you just want to go full traps, which is understandable. But yeah, you just have lots of really good cards in here. You can play a Dogmatica package in here if you want to. There's a lot of different directions you can take this deck. Um, but yeah, just lots of really, really insane traps in the game right now, including the uh, floodgates that are currently legal. Things like three copies of Skill Drain, Vanity's Emptiness, very, very, very oppressive floodgates. And you just have the ability to go first or go second because you know, a lot of these traps are good at breaking boards as well. Torrential Strike is the classic, classic combo. Um, and the extra deck doesn't really matter too much in this deck uh, because of the fact that you're playing stuff like Extravagance and Prosperity. You could like, you know, play a Punishment Suite, uh, things like Entis are good. But even if you don't want to do that, uh, that's totally fine. You can just play other traps instead. Um, there's a lot of uh, options for the trap lineup that you can play. And I think overall, Eldritch is one of the premier control decks in the format. Another honorable mention here is Sky Striker. That one's very, very good with Engage being at 2, multi roll at 3. Uh, lots of really, really powerful cards in that deck. You could even play stuff like Kaiser Coliseum, which is legal at 3 as well. Um, so lots of really, really interesting and different cards that we do not currently have legal in the TCG, but it warps deck building and kind of changes the landscape of how you want to go and approach those decks uh, in this game specifically. The next and the final deck to kind of comment on here is going to be Prank Kids. And I think Prank Kids is one of the best options for just kind of a free to play deck uh, just in general. Uh, you see all the Prank Kids here are normals, uh, so you know they're very, very easy to obtain. Uh, you have even like stuff like Polymerization, which you can uh, use. This is kind of just a barred version of Pax List. Uh, I'll leave a link to Pax's channel in the description below, uh, but he is very well renowned for this deck. But yeah, this deck uh, also takes use of Skill Drain as it's a very powerful ability to kind of um, you know, floodgate your opponent out while still being able to play reasonably around it um, just because all of your graveyard effects will still be uh, good to go and you can kind of play like a skill dream beatdown type of deck uh, ultimately with your big uh, fusions and your big link monsters. Uh, the deck has ability to play through hand traps because there's like combos to end on like totally awesome as well uh, with like the double dropsy setup and this deck is also notorious for playing just a lot of defensive cards. You can uh, play even more than what I have here uh, being like Maxi, Ash, and Perm. Uh, but yeah, you can just do a lot with this deck. Uh, you can even cut the polymerization if you want to and just play uh, you know, a list that some of the TCG players were opting to run for quite some time for a little bit there. But yeah, Meow moves at three as well, which is important because in the TCG, this card is at one. And so this gives you know, the deck a lot more grind ability and you know just general uh, ability to play past a singular Ash Blossom on your Prank Kid Graveyard effect, for instance. Um, so yeah, this is a deck definitely to watch out for um, as well. So yeah, these are going to be some of the decks that I think that are really, really good in Master Duel right now. Again, you know, there are so many decks in the game that are really, really good and have been enabled by the cards that are currently legal in the format. Um, I think the format has a lot of things that are free in comparison to, um, you know, either the OCG or the TCG format. There's not really a whole lot that um, is like strictly banned in this game that isn't banned in either of those two formats. But by comparison, there's a lot that's just unlimited. Um, and there's, <laughs> by extension, just a lot of room to kind of play around and see what works. So again, let me know what you guys think in the comments below if I miss any decks or if you guys think that um, there's other decks that I should have mentioned, things that you wanted to grind with or that you are grinding with personally. And I'd love to hear those in the comments below. And again, if you want to um, hear my thoughts on kind of budget staples, if you guys are interested in that, uh, if you guys are free to play players, uh, definitely leave uh, 150 likes on this video again. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, please check out my affiliate links in the description below and check out my Patreon if you're interested in or supporting the channel directly. And until next time, I will catch you in the next video. See you guys.